probably the funniest, most endearing little creatures you could ever come across. They're great companions. Once you've had a Shih Tzu, you're spoilt for anything else. I've been in the breed now for 11 years. I've got six now, so they're very collectible. <laughs> The Shih Tzu was originally developed in Tibet, shortly after moved to China, where it was further developed. They were one of the original palace dogs, so were used to being around people and have a lively, outgoing nature. They are very much into being with people. They're not the kind of breed that you would want to put in a kennel. They love their home environment, their sofas and their chairs. In fact, as soon as you get out of your chair, they're into it. Shih Tzu's are lovely little dogs, they're really quite lively for the size of them. They have good at medium exercise demands. They would like to go for really long exercise and long walks. A fit Shih Tzu will need up to an hour a day. Road walking is good because that builds up muscle, um, but they do, they are free spirits, so they like to have some open spaces to move around in as well. And although they're little dogs, they do keep up with the bigger dogs that are running around in the park. But I think the minimum really a day is, is about half an hour and again depends what age they are and how fit they are. Shih Tzus are a delight to train. We've had many through class doing absolutely stunning heel work. They're a beautiful little companion dog. They're very sweet um, but they've got real personality so they're good fun to train. If you find what their motivation is then you're on a winner and it's either in the form of some food or a toy, usually a squeaky, squeaky toy. Obviously you can train them because we have them doing what we want them to do in the show ring and they're very good at agility and he'll work to music. Um, but again, you know, it, it really does depend on the individual dog and the ability of the person who's training them. I think it's for a stubbornness that they have and an aloofness sometimes, like you know, I can call my dogs and sometimes they'll all come running together depending on my tone of voice and others it's as if I'm not there. The only area that I would be careful to train early on is that they've got coats, quite a lot of coat that needs grooming, so you need to think about getting them handled early, particularly by a kind groomer. So you want to be looking around their eyes and their ears and the paws, lots of people Get, used to the, get the dog used to handling the front paws. What they don't do is get them to handle the back paws. So you want to be handling your Shih Tzu all over from as soon as you get it and finding a really nice groomer to take it to. It does take a little bit of time to toilet train them once they've gone to their new homes. Um, and that's really just about being vigilant and getting them out like any puppy after they've had some play or food or sleep. Um, so you do need to be very aware that a Shih Tzu might take a wee bit longer than other breeds, but it's not impossible. We would rehome one with most families. They are nice, good, popular dogs. I think they'd fit in anywhere, really. I think because they're very gregarious um, and they like to run around and have fun, you should have a, a, a fairly reasonable size property. They're very fast, so maybe not suited to elderly people, Except maybe if they're rehomed and they're, they are elderly themselves and then they're lovely lap dogs. So really depending on what age they are, what it is you want to do with them, um, they can fit into almost any household. This is a breed that does need grooming and obviously if you want to keep them in a long coat you have to do that religiously every day, otherwise mats will form. They grow a lot of hair in their pads between their toes so that has to be trimmed regularly. Even road walking won't take that off, so you do need to look out for that, otherwise it will mat between the pads and that's very um, uncomfortable for them. Uh, you do need to attend to their nails and pads twice weekly just to make sure you're keeping it under control. With the clipped off Shih Tzu, um, that's a lot easier and most people who want a Shih Tzu as a pet will go for a pet trim. You still have to check the eyes, the ears, their faces, because they do get a little bit, even when they're trimmed, they tend to keep quite a lot of muzzle hair on, so you have to wash that regularly. Some of them have quite, quite prominent eyes, so you, you do need to check, especially in the summertime, that no dirt or seeds or little spikes of uh, dry grass get in there because they can end up with uh, ulcers in their eyes. And that's one of the things that not all Shih Tzu have, but the ones with the prominent eyes do tend to suffer from that. You do need to clean their ears out. Um, some of them get a lot of wax in their ears and others don't. 
health-wise, they're a sturdy, fit little dog. They don't have to be tested for anything at the moment. So yeah, they're, they're pretty sturdy. They have a long, thick, dense coat, which will require a certain amount of tension, but they are a dog that are very much a family dog, very active and outgoing personalities, so do make an ideal pet in the right environment.